Welcome to the Not Watching Podcast. My name's Rob Howard, and this week I'm joined by... Ian Bruce. And Marcus Hurley. We're also joined by... Ah, Will. Hello, I'm Will. Nice to meet you. We are now just over halfway through Season 7 of Game of Thrones. We're, we just had Episode 4, which was called The Spoils of War. I've just remembered off the top of my head. Um, yeah. For it was a very memorable episode, I thought. Um, holy fuckballs. <laughs> Yep, that's pretty much the review. What about episode? Uh, yeah. I take it we're putting out the full blown spoiler <laughs> warning turn off now if you've not oh, yeah, watched up to episode four. This, like, this, this we're is going to fuck gonna this contain back, massive spoilers. <laughs> yeah, so uh yeah, so before all of that though, we had the very first episode. I mean we we could go into some general thoughts on how this season's been going so far, like uh for example it's fucking picked up the pace, hasn't it? It's hit the ground running. It's brilliant. There's no, yeah. there's very little downtime, very little wasted time. It's just going. Yeah, and it. also kind of like, like we're going to have less episodes. We'd better just like squeeze in plot. Yeah, I mean, were this like season one or two, uh, Jon Snow would have probably spent half the season walking down to uh, yeah. Dragonstone uh, <laughs> Actually, and having lots of little adventures along the way. Yeah. But now, you know, next week he's there. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> You can tell that it's going at a high pace because what they haven't done is intersperse all the dull moments with tits, which is how they have worked. You know, basically, yeah. when they have yeah. to explain, yeah. in the earlier series particularly, if if they had to explain some background and give some history of Westeros, they would have Littlefinger in the brothel talking to someone else going, blah, blah, blah. And in the background, you'd see tits because that's what they did to keep yeah. people's attention whilst they explained plot. But the plot is all established. It's all there. And suddenly they're going, you know what? We don't really need to show that many tits. Let's just concentrate on the dragons. So more dragons, yeah. less tits. That's my <laughs> series summary. See who's Pretty been much. my surprise. It was it Euron? Oh, Euron Greyjoy. Yeah, Euron. Euron yeah. Yeah. He was such a. You know what? He is. He is like the. He is. He is kind of like the Cockney. I thought he was the Cockney Danny Dyer of uh, Game of Thrones <laughs> no, when he turned the up. Deadpool. He definitely names his sword, you know. doesn't he? Hello, yeah. <laughs> no, he's, he's Deadpool. Yeah, this, that, he's the merc the with the mouth. I'll get you a gift. <laughs> yeah, he's the, oh God, he's, he is, isn't he? Yeah. But God, he delivered. Scary. Oh, he's brilliant. He's funny he as fuck. Well. Yeah, he scares me now. But he, the thing is, he's proper. He's, he's doing the Nordic accent. He's he's properly like the guy, the 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 tourist that's randomly wandered into from Oslo. But um, you know, he's coming to yeah, see the country. Yeah. But he still loves a bit of white, rape and pillage and a finger up the bum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, that, that came out of nowhere. <laughs> Little bit of light relief, which is what a finger in the bum provides. Yeah. Um, but that was a, that was a wonderful <laughs> moment when he's talking to Jamie and he just basically is uh, you know well, you know what does she like I need to know you know being a husband you'll know her. you know does she like it rough does she like it smooth finger up the bum <laughs> I just cracked <laughs> up. That. That, was, that was a beautiful beautiful moment but then he's an absolute bastard you re- you really like him yeah. but you're kind of hoping he dies in a fairly horrible way am I am I are you with me yeah what well, year on he's he's the lovable piece of shit that. The others have never been. He's like the new scumbag, isn't he? He's, you know, you had some horrendous scumbags before. You had Joffrey, and then you had um, uh, what's his name, uh, Ramsay Bolton. Uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, they've always had the, the love to hate um, one. Yeah, although Ramsay yeah. was a lot funnier but than Joffrey. You've got, you've got the, the, the new the, sort the, of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you say Ramsay was a bit of a rap scally, and the bit when he's sitting there eating the sausage. Come on, that was genius. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that's what I mean. They both were like, they both were in their own different ways, like scumbags, but kind of no, funny Joffrey and a bit wasn't. weird. You just wanted to drown the yeah, little fuck bag. Joffrey, you liked it when he was a spot <laughs> little twat because he slapped Cersei because she wanted to be queen and that sort of thing. But yeah, Ramsay Bolton was a severe psychotic nutcase, whereas Eon Greyjoy just seems to be a sadist. I mean, the way that he displayed the bodies on the ship, it's like you just think there's no need. (laughs) 
it's like the burning ship, and he just like had the body piked through, just well, left there. Well, that's it. it was, it was, I was almost expecting it to pan out, and he's lined up four <laughs> bodies in the classic sort of YMCA line up. It's just it's the sort of sense of humour I've come to expect from you on Crow's Eye. It's 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 magnificent. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying but him as a character. I'm he's a so. perfect offset to Bran, who's as he's grown up has just become. I'm really boring. I can't remember being human. I'm part bird, part <laughs> mystical, and all cop. Do you, do you know? I what? tell you what. I've got. I've. I've got a thought about that. Sorry, Marcus. Um, yeah, I really it. feel like uh, Bran and what's happened to him has just cast this horrible shadow over what could have been a series of lovely reunions with the Starks. Like, oh god, yeah. It just seems to be really bumming me out, man. Like how sort of cold and fucking spock like he is now How, like, i was gonna say he's become a vulcan he's become a vulcan <laughs> and he's now mixed with professor xavier i'm like yeah, fucking hell it. if yeah. he goes he's bald, become professor x yeah yeah with the wheelchair i thought that actually in the last episode i was like yeah he's, he's, he's professor x <laughs> yeah man that's Just totally the dragon on. coming out of a basketball court and that's it the series is complete yeah <laughs> I don't, I don't, there's, um, there's been some wonderful stuff on Twitter, I must say, about the whole Stark reunion stuff, and you just kind of see that you got you got Sansa meets John, and it's like, oh, lovely to see you, John. I died, they stabbed me in the heart, and I came back to life. Oh, Bran, it's <laughs> lovely to see you. I am the three-eyed crow. Oh, um, Arya, it's lovely to see you. I have a list of people I'm going to kill. Most of them are dead already. <laughs> How are you, Santa? <laughs> well, I've just got shit choice in men. It's just like, as superpowers go, you're losing. Isn't it like any family gathering at Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. It I'm is not, crazy. I'm not, like... I'm, not, I'm not coming around your house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting for the um, I'm waiting for the Adams Family style musical about the Starks. The father was dreaded. The sisters really dreaded. Yeah, it's just got to be. It's just John to come back, isn't it? Oh, Theon. I know he's. Yeah, he's probably not going to be on great terms with any of them. He's not a Stark, though, was he? He was. He was a hostage from Great Greyjoy. You know. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Because who, who's dead? You got Rickon's dead, isn't he? He's, he's clearly dead. And then you had the was that was it just Rickon's? Dead? Oh no, and obviously uh, Rob, yeah, Rob, so yeah, the two and R's. Ned and Catelyn. <laughs> yeah, sorry, talk about the brothers and sisters, oh, but yeah, yeah. Did anyone else get the joke in this last episode? With um, oh, it was the bloke from um, it was Dickon. Um and. Uh, yeah, Brian I saw that. Marks, yeah, the Twitter one. His name. Yeah, but did, I I just realised what that joke was from. It, there was a joke with Ramsey Bolton, and he's holding Rick on. And he goes, "How long will Rick on keep his dick on?" And I just thought, uh, was that a nod? To, <laughs> when, when no, the, 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 the one I saw on Twitter because Ron laughs. Sorry, on. <laughs> no, the the one I saw on Twitter because Dickon is Sam's brother, right? Yeah, um, Dickon. <laughs> yes, uh, so, so Tarly. The, the, yeah, Dickon Tarly. So uh, you have got a photo of uh, Grey Worm. It says, no, it's, it says Dick off. <laughs> and then you got a photo of Varys. <laughs> Dick off. And then you got a photo of uh, well Billy Bones from Black uh, Sales. Dick on. Yeah. yeah, I liked that. <laughs> it appealed to my simple yeah, sense kind- of humour. Right, we've got the jokes out of the way. Let's get serious, shall we? Let's discuss this episode, this last episode, because holy well, fuck! Well, <laughs> my good. my 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 big thing on this was um, so Bron shoots dragon, dragon births yeah. people. <laughs> yeah, dragon comes down. Jamie on horse charges in shallow water towards dragon. In shallow water, because he's on a horse, clearly shallow. Dragon breathes fire. Bron knocks Jamie off horse. Jamie appears to sink about 20 foot, confused about the shape of coastline. Well, well he did maybe he was going. A bit of water he went through, didn't he? <laughs> I think he got knocked off at quite a speed, and was, that was him kind of disappearing this... down diagonally. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, you're on a horse, someone jumps up from below the horse height. 
knocks you off no, the no, horse. No, no, Brom was on horseback. No, no, Brom, Brom was, was on, on horseback. Ah. So Jamie was going to It's got a flying about. dragon. I think plot holes are allowed. No, no, no. Ooh. I Brom think was it was actually, a bit I've of watched it. this. I've watched this four times. Brom was actually on horseback. Um, I went to sleep at one twenty in the morning that night because I couldn't stop watching the fucking episode. <laughs> God. <laughs> By the way, suspension of disbelief does not always work. Harry Potter, perfect example. No problem with the wizardry, no problem with the Quidditch, all of that stuff. But there's the bit where you've got like that ginger kid and he's got two friends. Seriously. <laughs> not my Fair life. Fair enough. Sorry. I've always loved that. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I think there was a bit of uh, creative uh, license going on there. Interestingly, the director of the episode uh, is mostly known, uh, Matt Shackman. Uh, his CV mostly includes It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. He's directed 40-odd episodes of that. Uh, so uh, he'd done Fargo before, which I guess is a bit of a more ambitious thing to do. But yeah, this is a real step up. Um and yeah, it rivaled what they did in uh, the Battle of the Bastards last season. Uh, apparently, most amount of people on fire yes, in it, one seat. Se- yeah, I, I read before yeah. they put the series out there, they were going for a record of most amount of stuntmen on fire in a single scene. I did when I was yeah, you told that me that. I think battle, I re- when I saw that, I kind of thought, yeah, it's going to be this, isn't it? <laughs> Unless <laughs> yeah. it's even better, but. Because that's only one out of three yeah, dragons. That's true. One out of three dragons. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the Spoils of War currently has a 9.9 out of 10 on IMDb. Um, I think a lot of people agree it's, it was a very crowd-pleasing episode. And it would have been before that scene. Um, because there was a lot of uh, gratif- gratifying moments, like um, Aria, uh, the Aria reunion. Not only that, but the Aria fight with Brienne I thought was pretty mm. fucking cool. That was, um, that was fun. Just, I mean, it go. I think it was good for her to do something like that because we've not really seen her kind of dueling like that and actually Sorry, or holding Brie? her own. Oh. Aria, you right. know, we've seen her do like bits of training and stuff, mm. but actually like rocking up and going, yeah, I'm level 22, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> it was kind of cool, you know, like yeah. um, to to see that. Um, I thought it was good as well because um, you had Sansa. And the whole talk between them in the um in the catacombs and stuff, and she's very much still yeah. treating her like the kid's sister. So even when she says like all oh, the list of names and all that sort of thing, and she's like, you can almost see her kind of laughing it off a bit. She but made I think it real at that moment. You see the realization on her, and I gotta say, Littlefinger's face was just like, Ugh. all right. <laughs> oh, that yeah. episode was mainly about how many times can Littlefinger feel quite awkward. No, um, my question from that episode that. is, right, yeah. John Stark has two knees. Will he bend both of them? Will he bend the knee? <laughs> this is, this is to me, also the cave painting thing, which seemed a bit weird. I'm wondering if he went down there in advance, back at Jolks, you know, yeah. did the story, but really, <laughs> a lot of people have think said he's that. going to bend the knee? <laughs> Go on. What, what's his name? Go on, Davos. Get your chalk out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and when he said, I've got something else to show you, everyone I was watching it with did a little... <laughs> <laughs> should, we, should we do a little sweepstake? Ian, where, where, where do you stand on um, John standing or not? Will he bend the knee? Uh, I hope he doesn't. I hope he does not bend the knee. Oh, I, 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 I would kneel for Daenerys personally. Yeah, but if I was king of the north, I fucking wouldn't. She's been a right cunt the last few episodes. Well, um, well you know, what's interesting is the language, sorry, from what you've just said, um, because she does acknowledge him as king in the north. Yeah. Now, normally, he would have been warden of the north, as Ned Stark was, and you had a king of the seven kingdoms. She acknowledged him as king. Now, I thought that was quite interesting. Sorry, just as you said it. Anyway, yeah, yeah. let's carry on. Yeah, but... If she's going to be king of the lands, then he can't really be king of the north because then she wouldn't be queen of the north. Yes, but so, she could be empress. Uh, yeah, I'm not entirely mm. sure they have that dif- differentiation, do they? Well, it'll be interesting to find out. Uh, I've got a yeah. feeling she'll go empress, and then it, it may even end up you'll have a king of the Dornish and a king of the north, and then the empress that rules it overall or something like that. Hey, you never know, there's options, but it's just the way she acknowledged <clears> him <throat> as king. I thought that was really interesting. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the line mm. where he kind of where Davos and John are sort of having this conversation walking along that crazy path that seems to run around. That is a well defended castle, isn't it? If you've got an army, there's no chance of getting to that, really. I'll be honest, it's a bit like my back farm. garden. But anyway, um, it's. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like when he goes, oh, because she's got a good heart. And he goes, I've seen you looking at her heart. <laughs> it's like, there's obvious interest, and he I kind of brushes that, yeah. it off. Oh, there's, a def- lot. Oh, there's def- they're definitely but... doing a sexual tension thing, yeah. And it's that's the whole. Yeah. But it's, it's the fact that it's is addressed. It incest when you don't know you're John... related. <laughs> but that's the thing. Well, like... yeah, that's it. She's his aunt, I think. That's the way it works. Oh, wow. Uh, but to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if they did like a chemistry read like before the whole show, like when they were first cast, because this they always knew this was going to happen. Like this was part of the the roadmap. Um, but I think it's cool, you know. He's gone down to get his dragon glass, and I feel I feel like he's got he's got to bend the knee, isn't he? Otherwise, uh, we're all fucked. I don't. Um, I don't know. She might. She might back down because she's very adamant about it. Very adamant. But she might give in to his stubbornness, and it might end up admiring that about him. Well, maybe she'll which get will, uns- which will elevate him from mere, you know, ally to potential co partner or whatever you know yeah well i thought he i thought she might end up in a bit of trouble and he'd help her out and that's how it would work out and that could well, still happen cl- that's but a after cliche, though i hope that doesn't happen but We're after something. the display after the after this display last week um with the dragon i mean yeah she can fucking kick ass we're missing um, something ballisters or not what are we missing we're missing who can ride those dragons it's got to be someone of the blood. Oh, uh, right. So he will well, yeah. end well, up riding one of those dragons. Up. Now, whether it's because he bends the knee or he marries her or mm. something else remains to be seen. But Jon Snow will ride a dragon <coughs> by the time the series is out. That I'll put money on. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I definitely agree there's something to that too. Um, I mean, when he first arrived there at Dragonstone, one kind of rushed right past him. Must have been like, oh, hello. <laughs> um, I've got the but, same thing. My friends, yeah, dogs, no, it's, it's always like that. It's just like, oh, oh shit, there's a dog there. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really think like the way this season is going, uh, I mean, it feels like a, it's more chess than it's ever been. You know, things mm. are actually really happening. Things are moving around. I feel like this is going to kind of culminate in the end of Cersei and then season eight will be the White Walkers. I don't think we'll see much going on in the North until then. I think Game of Thrones is possibly one of the hardest TV series I've ever had on the predicting who lives and who dies (laughs) kind of stage, but we're getting towards it. And I, I think we can kind of maybe do some sort of unofficial sweepstakes soon. I you know, as in who actually will survive, because if you look at the whole thing, if you look at the original history where Robert Baratheon fought off the Targaryens and all of that stuff, and people who were enemies at the time became friends, and people who were friends at the time became enemies, and all of that, I think it's going to be really interesting to see who turns coat, who joins with the new... So, Daenerys is clearly going to take the lead, or that's... Well, maybe it's not as clear as it should be, but that's my expectation. She's the boss. She's got the fire. It's yeah, the song she'll... of ice and fire. The fire will fight the ice. That's where I'm seeing it going. But it will be yeah. fascinating. I mean, Cersei is not going to give up. Cersei has to die, I believe, or at least be completely taken out of the game. Jamie I, Lannister I reckon, uh, may turn on I reckon. That. Oh, God. Yeah, I think they're going to kill each other, probably. I that think seems Jamie fairly will end up kill- Yeah, I think Jamie killing Cersei seems poetic and therefore fairly likely but at the same time whatever on the we giant find map likely of... on this it's it's well it's so hard to predict this is why i think we're all enjoying it so much it's like a proper soap opera this yeah no she's going to die on the giant map of westeros that they put together so nicely uh at the beginning of the season i thought yeah. that was really impressive will, will I think... cersei be her will she stay in the southern kingdoms or will she travel north? Or will she whatever? Will she still be Cersei? Or will she? Well, be... they've taken they've taken uh, Castle Rock, 
So she's got no, she's got nowhere to go, really. I know, but from... uh, you don't. That's the thing. We don't know where it's going in general. But she, <laughs> what if when he take when Jamie? I mean, I I agree. It would be a kind of bitter irony that it's Jamie that has to take out Cersei because she's become the Mad Queen in opposed to the Mad King, and it's like history kind of repeating itself in a weird way. But will she be a queen of men, or will she be a queen of the undead? Because he does have a oh, Valerian sword. Oh, is she going to start leading an army of White Walkers? Are you going down that route? Who no, knows? I don't know. Mm. Or will she die but not die? We don't know how far <laughs> they'll... What if they arrive this season? Then season eight, it might be the whole culmination of the kingdom's ends yeah. with this season. We don't know. Well, yeah. because it would we're be all, very... We're all getting caught up in this war, and it's all called with the dragons and thing, but they are still marching. They're forgetting saw that the big right threat. At the start, Winter yeah, is coming. We saw that right at the start, and if you look at the map, the river's frozen over by uh, Winterfell. Oh yeah, there was talk that they won't need the wall; they can just walk around it. Mm. Interesting. <laughs> that was now, one theory I heard. On a separate note, less plot related, but more the suspension of disbelief. How the fuck do Arya's disguises work? Anyone? Any thoughts? She. How did the faceless man one work? Uh, she gets them from the Tom Cruise Mission Impossible shop. Ah, that nails yeah. it. Yeah. Because, oh. because it's, oh, it's also the... Scooby Doo. I'm kind, I'm kind of expecting at some point, you know, because she she does a good Walter Frey. We know this. He's yeah, not short, but no, she she is short, but she manages to do the tall old man thing. She does the voice very well. I'm sure she's had the training and stuff. It's just part of me is at some sport point expecting Cersei to be betrayed by the mountain who turns out to be Arya in disguise. <laughs> yeah, that would be excellent. <laughs> Standing on Tyrion's shoulders. Yeah. It, would be, it would be wonderful, wouldn't it? It's like, ah, uh, the platform shoes were hard to acquire. <laughs> he doesn't say anything, so there will be no way to give it away. But, uh, I mean, Ian, how are you finding it? Because, you know, you've been... Well, I know you enjoyed the last episode. Um, we kind of had a little... Uh, not chat so much, but... I've been really enjoying it. And I, if I'm honest, after episode three, I thought, wow, that was... I thought episode three was really, really well done. Um, yeah. And I would have been happy if it had just been kind of filler for the rest of it. How yeah. did episode end? How did episode three end? With, I'm trying um, to remember. O- Olena. Drinking the poison. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. That was fantastic. When the way that um and the snake with the voiceover and the the daughter of the the snake daughter. Yeah. Taking oh, the that, kiss that with the poison. Scene. It the was just it was horrific. Snakes. So the cruelty displayed was just. I mean, cruelty yeah. is never nice, but it did take it to a new level. And regardless of how justified she felt, it was just horrible. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I that episode was kind of perfect for me. Uh, in a non-big battle kind of way. Hmm. Um, yeah, it was less action and, and more plotty. Yeah, but what I think it showed that was extended in episode four was uh, it, they're trying to humanise Jamie. And I've, I've not had a soft yeah. spot for him, but I've always kind of understood that he's been her bitch for quite a long time. And My for whatever reason, manipulation, yeah, control, all the rest of it, um, she's she's still playing him and he's kind of going along with it because she gives it up or whatever uh, but uh, with the Elena Tyrell is it whatever her name was yeah, yeah. her from the Avengers um, uh, yeah Elena <laughs> not those Avengers no the, the other <laughs> Avengers the good ones um, <laughs> she's uh, he, he started becoming he was seen to be flawed in a way that wasn't yeah. just somebody's bitch and what I think episode four did really well. One of the big things online, and what I agree with it as well, having watched it again with my wife, was the, the battle at the end, you didn't really want anybody to die, and you wanted everyone to win, no. but you, there was no way that was going to happen, so the tension was really horrible, uh, but yeah. good from a TV point of view. So, yeah, um, yeah, I didn't want Bron to die, I didn't want Jamie to die, I didn't want Danny to die, I didn't want Tyrion mm. to get too they close because he might chip over the... and drown in a puddle. I didn't. I didn't mm. want any of those things. The thing um, is, this is, the, my, yeah. this is where my gut instinct goes. So Tyrion is with Danny. <laughs> Jamie and Tyrion still love each other. They're brothers, right? 
Jamie has now found mm. out that Tyrion mm. did not murder Jamie's son Joffrey. Yep. Yeah. Jamie's he knows for definite now. From Cersei. He had a I feeling. Think, yeah. He, he. Yeah, you're right. He got <laughs> into it. But now he gave him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. yeah. But now Jamie is getting more and more alienated from Cersei, who is seeing as mad. My gut instinct, and I, I will almost certainly be proven wrong, is that Jamie will end up killing Cersei, going you, just as he took down the Mad King when he was one of the King's Guard, right? He's going to take down the Mad Queen. Oh, uh, yeah. That would be like a brilliant bit of foreshadowing. That would Exactly yeah, that. that. The yeah, King Slayer will become the Queen Slayer. He will then yeah. go with his brother. No, it's not about Daenerys. <laughs> it's about rejoining his brother, who he loves, and then become a good guy. As in a proper good guy, if you see what I mean. That's <laughs> where I see this going. I've, It'd be great to see him in that final push, but yeah, I don't know. I, Go on, sorry. Um, the other thing that my wife and I were chatting about after episode four, or I, I mentioned, because mm. she, uh, we've done a couple of TV shows. Uh, we really liked Medium, which with Patricia Arquette. That's a good show mm. if you like network TV. I, I know you love network TV, Rob, so we won't spend too Oscar much. Oscar winning <laughs> Patricia Arquette. Yeah. Yeah. Um, She's not watched any of the stuff like Lost. Uh, we watched Dexter all the way through to the end, stupidly. But she hasn't done any of the really good ones. <laughs> I know that's uh, like. She hasn't done a lot of the really good ones all the way through to the end. So I brought up the fact that, or the, po- the extreme possibility that, we are not going to get an ending that satisfies you in every single way. Uh, all of the shows that I've watched, they all have <laughs> Sorry, endings. So that's a line people- I've used on my wife so many times. What, you're not going to get the ending? You've... <laughs> yeah, I think we all have. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, all of the, I think all of the major shows, Dexter is possibly the most horrific example where it just went to a point where it's it's like the cleaner had taken over the writing. Uh, yeah. But other shows like Battle, the, the revamped Battlestar Galactica and Lost and others like mm. that, there are always people that just hate the ending. But Started so my, wrong but didn't get there, yeah. Yeah, but as I, as my wife and I were discussing, or I've dis- and subsequently discussed with other people, this I th- I think this will be a show about the journey. And for months, once it finishes, everybody will be hating on the ending. But actually, yeah. we've had seven or seven and a half or eight seasons of really great TV, and we have to. I think it might be wise to expectations and all the rest of it to prepare ourselves for an ending that doesn't tick all the boxes that we want it to tick. I, for example, I would like. A, t- sorry, stand by. I for on, yeah. I would like a everybody coming together at the end and all heading off to face the White Walkers because they realise their squabbling is just all a bit childish and it's a game and blah. And this thing coming from the north, they've been around for thousands of years and they'll still be around in a thousand more if you don't get your shit together and grow the fuck up. I'd like. I'd quite like that because that would be a good wholesome mm. message to send to everyone. Never going to fucking happen. Um, but. Uh, yeah. The journey for me has been as has been probably has been better than I think the ending is going to be. Mm. I what I'm, I would <clears throat> sorry, what I, I would I, say from this, I think the show. Is, <laughs> sorry, oh, I'm going to take this one if you don't mind, proven me, One thing. Yeah, go for it. Mate. Go for it. Okay, so what I would say is George Martin started writing these books an awful long time before. He started writing these with a definite plot arc in mind. So what we don't have, when you mentioned Dexter, which went to shit at the end, because they did the first couple of series and then they ran out of ideas, they didn't know where to take it. And you mentioned other things and they, they don't really know where they're going. They've done this and they've done this and they've done this. They've got a rough, vague idea. And even though George Martin hasn't finished all the books, that doesn't mean he hadn't mapped out the entire plot arc and knows exactly where it's going. And every little thing in previous series was leading to a thing. He will have an ending. And yes, it won't be pleasing for everyone. But I do not believe he's going to go for a massive anticlimax or a massive depressive thing. What I'm expecting to see is, as I've been sort of describing, and this may not be the exact one, is he's building up the characters we like. And even, I, I don't believe you on Crow's Eye is going to come round, for example. But what we are going to see is one power will take the Seven Kingdoms. It's going to be Daenerys, I believe. I do believe she's going to make friends of a lot of people who are current en- currently enemies, just like she did when she was taken over the other side of things. We're going to see a lot of death. We're going to see a lot of pain. We still will. But we will see her take it. She's going to join with Jon Snow. I think she's going to join with Jaime Lannister. 
she's going to join with some of the other major characters we know, know and love. Some of them will die, it'll be painful. But we will see most of them joining together and then in the next series mm-hmm. turning towards the White Walkers. That That's what I believe, because I think that's what's been planned right from the start, which is, the, it's, which is the bit that doesn't happen with most TV series when they go, oh, I've got an idea, let's do a pilot. Brilliant, first series, prison break. Yeah. Hang on, five series later, he's still got the same guy and he's breaking out of prison. This yeah. is fucking nonsense. Dexter, he's a serial killer, but he's a nice guy. Um, he's a blood splatter analyst. Uh, shit, we've run out of ideas, but let's do some more series. We're not on that level here. We're, we're at several levels above. Yeah, Marcus, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just saying, um, the one thing that kind of worries me as a viewer, not necessarily about the way the show's going, but it's just that it shows us that not always nice guys win. Nice people don't always win. Yeah. And that's the one thing that they, right from the end of season one, you know, heroes can die just as easily as a common yeah. person. So, as you're, I think you're right, Ian, it, there are endings that we would love to see. But I think the whole point of Game of Thrones is life is cruel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And it, it could, it could be a really bittersweet. It could be that they win and no one wins. It yes. could be they win and everyone we know and love is dead, but they've still won in the process. Um, you could see, you, we could see an aftermath of the events. It could be anything. We don't know. That's the whole point. Um, it could literally go anywhere. And I think that's what makes it so nail biting. And that's what made that last episode, the last 15, 20 minutes so harrowing to watch and just so riveting because we've been following these characters for years and years we all know that bronze a bit of a scumbag you know he's a mercenary he doesn't give a shit about anyone but you like him because of his years with at Tyrion's side and even when he goes off to dornish with jamie lannister yeah you still like him as a character can i just point um, out something about this because yeah. it's not about nice or nasty Honestly, in, no, Game no, of, no. in Game of Thrones, it's not about nice no, or no, nasty. I'm, I'm not saying about nice or nasty. I'm just saying the characters that were all in that scene are characters that we've watched and grown and become invested in. So you you root for them because you you're not necessarily thinking, oh, they're they're the good guy, they're the bad guy. It's not anything about that. It's you you have a sense of identity with all of them. Absolutely, um, and you don't want anything to happen to all. And and something had to happen, but somehow they managed to navigate that entire battle. And to come out with a result that was just phenomenal. But the ones who have um, survived in Game of Thrones, it doesn't matter about nice and nasty. The ones who have survived are the cunning, which is what Game of Thrones is teaching us. It's the cunning survive. And Jon Snow, because he gets stabbed, but the gods helping him. So basically cunning or blessed <laughs> by a god. That's basically the ones that are living. <laughs> or really fucking hard to kill like the Hound. So... Yeah, he's he's bit he's yeah. put himself in the yeah. harm's way though, Jon yeah. Snow. You know, going over the wall and yeah. kind of like, you know, he he really yeah. put his ass on the line yeah. going to the wildlings and stuff. Oh, oh that's uh, it. No, so. no, Jon Snow is the nice category who's blessed by God. You've got then yeah. the double hard bastard fighting category, and not all of them live, but some of them do. Jamie's done okay. He was double hard bastard fighting category. I'd put him down in that. And then you have got the cunning category, which is Varys. Which is Daenerys, little which is Littlefinger, which is most of them. Cersei, to be yeah, Cersei. And then you've got, um, you know, you've got the double R bastard fighting category, which I put Arya under now. And then you've got Sansa, who's actually on the nice category and has just gotten away with it so far. But really, yes. you can put them under nice and lucky, cunning, and really fucking hard. Those are the ones that are still alive. <clears throat> I. Any any one outside of that barrier that anyone could come up with? Oh, uh, Pod Podrick Payne. Yeah, he's lucky. He's nice lucky. and lucky, yeah. isn't he? He's yeah, he's got Brienne to help him. Who's double hard? <laughs> yeah. This, this uh, what about uh, mentally categorising? I suppose you could say maybe Sam is uh, cunning, um, but then no, he's just no, really he's helpful nice and lucky. <laughs> the, yeah. the only nice ones that are living are really lucky. He was lucky enough to have Jon Snow supporting him. He was lucky enough to well, have, have some dragon glass on him. Yeah, it's, it's that well, so there's a handful of the nice and lucky ones, but mostly it's cunning could, or double hard. 
You could say that Jorah was lucky that Sam was around, though, because yeah. he's uh, sorted out his horrible grayscale Yeah, stuff. but Jorah wow. is double odd. He is double odd. I'm looking forward to him getting back in the game, like, you know. Yeah, that was He's been cool. out of it for... He spent a whole season moping, uh, <laughs> so uh, hopefully he can... Uh, yeah, was he filming yeah. something else, do you think? He's had a bit of a medical issue, so mope, I don't think moping is fair. Jesus. <laughs> well, it wasn't. It, yeah. He was. He was also cast out, wasn't he? And uh, Rob had the plague he, and went to work. He does a TV show on one of the satellite channels, doesn't he? He's got his own like detective thing or something. Hmm. I wonder if he was he's doing his friend zone. <laughs> he's Mister Voiceover Man. He has been for years. That guy. Um, well, that's Ian why Glenn, Sean Bean it? had to have his head cut off at the end of the first series because otherwise he couldn't have done all those uh, mobile phone efforts. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, any final thoughts about this season so far? Um, I think we've speculated oh. and uh, recapped I think, a fair amount I think there. That, might, that uh, might be a good episode, that one. Yeah. I might yeah. have to watch you, it again. You mean this podcast? No, I mean the, the podcast. Episode, not the, yeah, I meant the podcast. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm done. No, I'm that was cool. I yeah. have spent, gentlemen. Yeah. I, I just, just quickly, I've got to say, um, the was it Queen's Vengeance or something? The previous episode, Queen's Justice. Um, I did get a little worried with the way that they almost skipped certain things, um, like the Battle of Castle Rock. They arrived, and then it was kind of almost told in tale, almost a bit like <laughs> uh, Ocean's Eleven style. Yeah. Where Tyrion I quite like though. I thought that was great. But I thought the Battle of High Garden at the end, the way that it started up and then it jump cut and it's like, oh, it's over, they're gone. I was a little, oh. But then that following scene with Olena and Jamie really made up for all of that. I'm also glad they um, used that. They saved they saved that budget and spent it on the dragons and shit yes. at the end of. Well, that's so the forth. thing. I, <laughs> that's why I now trust what they're doing because I thought, oh god, we've had a couple of episodes where it's been nuts. That ship battle was insane. It came yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. And I, lo- I, was, I love, I, I my love jaw. <clears throat> my jaw is just on the floor, thinking this is just insane. You've got all these actors; these ships are burning all around them. How much of it is CG, but it looks real? You know, you've got these flaming wrecks. <clears throat> yeah, go on, Rob. I just really like the swagger of that, uh, where they were dealing with the Castle Rock siege and also the uh, the High Garden thing. All the while, there's a voiceover going on, <laughs> yeah. so it was it was almost like background, but it looked great, all of it, like even mm. the ships in the harbour and all that. Um, I really enjoyed that, and uh, every episode so far has had incredible production value. So yeah, yeah I'm so happy. Even but, out, even oh, yeah. outside of that, just uh, just the the idea that the Lannisters are nowhere near done. They've got so many hidden plans. They've got so many things they're planning to do. Obviously, they've just gotten dragoned, but God knows where they've got the rest of their forces <laughs> and what's going to happen. It's it's compulsive stuff. It's brilliant. I love it. It's some yeah. of the best TV I've ever seen. I love it. I am yeah. so gonna bloody miss this series when it's done. <laughs> just buy the DVDs and watch, watch it again. again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all the spin-offs. Definitely. Because you're aware of, you you're aware yeah. that George Martin has got. I think it was four different pilots out. This stuff's got to keep going because it's so good. It's it's quality TV, and I I love it. Yeah, yeah. I mean HBO yeah. unless they ring the hell out of Westworld, they don't have anything else, really. So uh, yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm something sure. will come along. Well, Why would they have anything else at the moment? Because Game of Thrones is enough. Exactly. Mm. They're supposed to be doing a Watchmen show, I think, they're talking about. Yeah, Damon that, that Loft. could be fun. Basically, so long, trouble is, what they need to do is take good established stories, like they've done with the George Martin stuff. There are other fantasy authors out there, for example. Stephen Erickson's Malaysian Book of the Dead. I'm going to call that one now. No, Malaysian Book of the right. Fallen. Uh, Dread's looking call for a home events. as well. Sorry? Dread's looking for a home as well. Um, yeah. Dread would be good. But that's owned, interestingly, Dread and all of that stuff is owned by Rebellion, who do yeah. the um, uh, Sniper Elite Games stuff. Yep. Um, I'd, I'd like yeah. to see them get a little bit of a boost. But yeah, they could do a fantastic Dread series. But yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see them find some, but I'd like to see something with a lot of story behind it, not just we're going to do a series and we have no idea where it's going, but just to get a really good mm. story, a ten series arc, a five series arc, and just see it through. Who, That'd be magnificent. Who, who are the showrunners well, doing I... their next series with? Because it's like a, isn't it a civil war thing or a modern day civil war thing? I'm not sure. 
Yeah, it's like a what if kind of thing. If uh, the uh, reality or war something? of independence, yeah, it's like if the war of independence went on and on. Is that with or HBO something. or somebody else? I think it is HBO. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they. I think they're okay. they're they'll. They've obviously uh, worked together quite well, yes. so they probably have quite yeah. a good relationship. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. Up, yeah. Uh, yeah, Witcher are doing... Uh, Witcher are... That's going on Netflix. Uh, there's a Witcher mm. TV show yeah, coming I'll give out. That up, so. I yeah. mentioned previously um, Neverwhere, isn't it? It's going to be... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Who doesn't love a bit uh, of Neil they've Gaiman? They've yeah. because they're happy with American Gods. I'm really happy that that's a bit of news. And I think after this, I don't think <clears> we're going <throat> to turn it down. Um, I just so hope I, they I'm don't really suddenly try and turn it into a New York thing instead of London, which would completely destroy the whole thing. It's got to be a British yeah, thing. I, no, I think I think they'll keep it pretty um, close to the original. I reckon because um, it was just uh, yeah. I'm really looking forward to that. Really, <sighs> really, because London scene is still cool around the rest of the world, which is why. You always get random bits of films. Hopefully, but how many people will get the it's reference to the Knight's this. Bridge? And how many... Oh, I don't think... Yeah, my but Skype that's is the dying. whole point. I mean, if you look at the American Gods series, you struggle with a lot of that anyway. Um, so, you know, I'm sure they'll write it as a way that it would make sense. Um, because the whole point it is meant to be London Below, isn't it? So I'll have to take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll watch it. Uh, Trust I me, probably it's will. It's going to be good. It's going to oh, be good. I'll watch Rob. it. They do. Cool. All right. Well, I think we'll be checking in again uh, when the when the current Game of Thrones season is done. Uh, but I think that's all we've got for now. This has been a Not Watching podcast in partnership with NotListening.co.uk, where you can also hear myself, Marcus, and Ian talk about video games and virtual reality on the Not Playing podcast, and Adam, Ash, and Will talk about all manner of funny things on the Not Listening podcast. You can email us at notwatchingpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet at or follow us on Twitter at notwatchingpod. You can find the show notes for this show at notlistening.co.uk and if you're listening to us on iTunes, then please do give us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Thanks for listening. See ya. Yeah, also I want to talk about Preacher at some point, so we've got to deal with that. Sure, man. Like, yeah, uh, I mean, I want to talk about Dunkirk and, uh, to a lesser extent, Planet of the Apes. Oh, I'll but... tell you what, I went to the cinema last night for the first time in two years. I saw a film. Oh, right, go on yeah. then. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a cryptic clue. I've, I've kind of done a little quiz here, right? I'm ready. So I'm, yeah. I've got ten cryptic clues, and the first of you to get it, so they they, they start in really Cars really three. cryptic, and then it gets harder. <laughs> right. So okay. So this is the film I went to see yesterday. First clue. Are, are we ready? Yeah. Spider Man Spome coming. Spider Man Homecoming. Rob, you win. <laughs> Damn! How did you get it on the first clue? I don't know. It just like the the sounds of the vowels and the order they were in. It kind of uh, it kind of just I don't know. It just I think it's Swedish for Spider Man Homecoming, whatever it was. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh shit! I forgot to make sure it wasn't some sort yeah. of translation issue. <laughs> yeah. It was good though. Uh, yeah, I thought it was all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. It was it was a little bit different to uh, the last lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, yeah Dunkirk was good. Hate in... the Spider Man figure, for example, that helped. You did what? I didn't hate the person that played Spider Man, which really helped. Oh right, me. yeah. No, he's he's all right. He's got he's quite an endearing chap, you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can root for him. Uh, yeah, yeah, Dunkirk no was good at the Science Museum, by the way, in fo- seventy millimeter. That was pretty uh, mind mind blowing. Uh, don't recommend it with a hangover though. My God, I felt like absolute shit afterwards. Um, <laughs> but yeah, cool. All right, that might be a a bleep uh, after the credits type <laughs> outtake type thing, maybe. I don't know. Nah. Cool.